Hello and welcome to IB Times TV. I'm Leanna Brindid, Senior Business Reporter for IB Times UK. We're concentrating on the tourism industry as we have the Executive Director from the European Tourism Council, Eduardo Santander. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thanks. Well, of course over the last few years we've had the European sovereign debt crisis and previous to that we've had the global credit crisis. Of course that's had an impact in terms of tourism. So could you give us a bit of background on how that's impacted Europe? Yes, of course it's impacted uh, uh, dramatically, especially in the domestic uh, tourism. Um, as you know, the European Tourism Commission is more focusing on the uh, long-haul markets, and uh, especially in four key markets right now, which are uh, USA, Canada, China, and Brazil. And we are actually, uh, the market intelligence is providing us uh, uh, intelligence that uh, it's same the opposite thing. So there is an increase of traveling again to Europe in the last three years. Coming back to your question, especially domestic, is a dramatic change. So there is uh, uh, some call for action now, right there. Okay, and so of course with this dramatic change, plans need to be put in place in order to mitigate further loss of market share. Um, can you tell us about maybe something about Destination 2012 and of course what timelines and strategies are in place? Yes. Thing, as you mentioned very well, you know, Europe is uh, losing uh, market share towards especially uh, Asia and Latin America, and but of course the, the, the race is not won. So there have been a uh, decrease, but Europe is still uh, the um, destination, uh, tourism destination number one worldwide. But with that said, it's important now to focus on that not we don't still lose uh, uh, market share. Why? Because you know this position will be uh, took, uh, taken by, by others, which uh, will be other other destinations far right away from Europe. I think uh, I may uh, remind that the. 10% of the GDP of Europe it uh, goes to the tourism sector, so um, it's a very, very, very important industry that we should keep focusing and investing on. Sure. And you mentioned in your presentation some key growth areas where you think that um, your group could really focus in on and bring in more um, incoming travellers, I suppose, from worldwide. Where are those areas? Yes, yeah, so, well, especially it's, uh, the Chinese. Uh, of course, Brazilian, and we should keep investing in North America. North America is, uh, you know, together uh, USA and Canada, still the, um, the, the market with more arrivals coming to the, the most arrivals coming to Europe uh, from the long haul markets. And I think the, piece, uh, the big change that should happen now is uh, to finally join the initiative of the private sector with the public sector. There has been a period for a long, period, uh, for a long time that we uh, haven't talked to each other. So we have a private sector active in the marketplace and the public sector at the same time, but not talking to each other. So it's not just about you know asking for money or for funds. It's more about asking about strategies and how to do it together. So to, to take advantage both. Sure. Um, what's quite interesting in your presentation was talking about um, how marrying the, the group with the private sector in terms of tackling the opportunities over in China. Can you give us a few examples of how that's going to work? Yes, absolutely. You know, if uh, we should uh, meet and we're going to create think tanks, so, so a really high level conference, yeah, not just in China, but in Brazil and the United States and Canada, where we are going to ask you know, uh, exactly not what, uh, what our they're doing so well in the market, but what are their challenges? What is uh, the private sector uh, experimenting for? Uh, you know, uh, experiencing to which challenges are they are they confronting there? And uh, the answer for that will be that the, the main challenges are related to, to travel facilitation. It's not what we need to learn about the um, Chinese customs or the Brazilian one or the Indian ones. It's just how can provide us uh, traveling to Europe without barriers. And this goes a little bit to the political level. So, you know, the ETC has, of course, this um, lobby role of, of course, to, to stress the situation um, to the um, to the European Commission and other bodies, or our politicians, uh, to stress the situation. So we cannot, uh, in uh, this crisis environment, 
uh, we cannot destroy tourism as a main engine for, for uh, economic growth. Mm -hmm. Okay, and of course there's so many different uh, countries, whether it's in Latin America or China, or concentrating in North America, um, that you want to really bring in more um, tourists into Europe. So with all, I suppose, this logistical nightmare in uh, trying to facilitate this and promote it, how would you say, um, or what would you say are the main hurdles that you guys will face over the next 18 months to bring market intelligence to to well, the media? This is going to be a pilot project, so this is going to last for 18 months, so we need to evaluate them. After that, we will put a manual of best practice together that should last for at least 10 years. This, uh, I see this project as long term, and we will see result, real tangible results at least at the year 2020. So it's now about to put in place all the tools that we need to accomplish our targets in 2020. But we need to identify all these uh, all these uh, challenges and of course all the opportunities out there. There are a lot of opportunities of course and coming back to the crisis. Every crisis brings some opportunities out there, and, uh, especially in the domestic business while well in Europe. Um, I may say there is a there is a opportunity in Europe for all pockets. Uh, it's, uh, Europe has the, the, the big advantage, it's a really, really unique destination with different opportunities uh, for traveling. So, and this is something that we are exporting to the, to the long haul markets as well, so because uh, Europe used to be uh, seen as a very expensive um, uh, uh, destination uh, in the long haul market, which is not the truth. It's if you compare with others. Of course, uh, the competition has, uh, uh, has grown a lot, and uh, uh, now we have to, to, to look at ourselves and see what we want to stay. And it, it, there's really a call to action here to say, okay, to join all these initiatives from the private to public sector, of course, with the politicians well hand in hand, you know, to keep moving uh, together. I think this is a common project that affects to all us Europeans to keep uh, um, yeah, this spot not just floating but going. Okay, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. That was Eduardo Santander. Executive Director at the European Tourism Council.